producers of tea in the world, second only to China, where it was first discovered thousands of years ago. These are the gentle slopes of Jorhat in Assam, in India's largest tea growing region. The world renowned Assam tea, besides many other varieties, is grown here. So, what exactly is tea? All tea, be it black, green, white, yellow, or oolong, comes from the same plant, Camellia sinensis. It's in these hills of Assam that in 1823, British officer Major Robert Bruce stumbled upon the plant growing wild. It was used by the Singpo tribe to concoct local brews, but Major Bruce recognized it as tea, and thus was born the rich tradition of tea cultivation in the region. For centuries since, tea estates have been brewing magic in these plantations. I'm a second generation planter from our family's side. So tea is nothing new to me. To make good quality tea, you have to have the backing of science with your art of making fine tea. Generations of tea planters have dedicated their lives to this fine art. Today, it's grown into a massive industry where its cultivation and manufacture are highly honed crafts. It all begins with picking, planting and growing the right variety. In the world of tea, these varieties are known as clones or cultivars. Once a tea clone or cultivar is planted, it can grow for nearly 50 years. These plants require a great deal of care. They must have the perfect combination of soil acidity, the right amount of rainfall and ideal humidity and temperature. Even leaf plucking is a delicate affair. There are no machines and everything is done by an expert hand following a cardinal rule. Not every leaf is to be picked. Just two select leaves and a bud from every shrub. But in the 21st century, where demands are sky high and supply is threatened by climate change, there are new challenges. So what can science do to lend a hand? We, as the planting community, we would like the research to take place on certain new varieties of clones as new planting material in the tea estates, which can withstand drought, which is one of the major concerns with global warming. Uh, we would also like new type of plants which are resistant to pests to a certain degree. Uh, which would also eliminate or reduce rather the impact of pesticide load on tea. Over and above that, we would like ways and means of how to enrich soil by adding less quantity, but with more higher nutrient value. The call to tea researchers is clear to provide the industry with a means to combat climate change pesticide-free agri-solutions, updated manufacturing methods and machinery, and new varieties of tea, especially organic teas, that are gaining popularity around the world. When it comes to fulfilling these wishes, tea planters need look no further than the Tea Research Association, or TRA, built on the foundation of India's oldest and largest tea research institute. This is the Toklai Experimental Station, the epicenter of tea research in India. The Toklai Experimental Station, currently called the Toklai Tea Research Institute, is a century-old organization. This was established in 1911 by the tea planters. It is probably one of the very few research organizations where there is participation from the growers, that is from the tea industry and the government together running an organization. The Toklai Tea Research Institute, or Toklai as it's known, is built expressly to service the needs of planters and manufacturers. Its impact is felt across over a thousand tea estates occupying more than 3 lakh hectares across northeast India. And though Toklai may be a hundred years old, 
it's the tea industry's best way to keep up with the future we are also a, a large consuming nation tea consuming nation therefore it is absolutely essential that the productivity and the quality of tea produced in our country is improved day by day and so toklai brings out all its tools of cutting edge science from biochemistry and biotechnology to it remote sensing and new age gadgetry and it all starts here in the botanical gardens these gardens have one of the largest collections of tea clones or cultivars in india each variety has a unique set of traits these traits range from different flavor and aroma profiles to drought resistance and pest tolerance every plant's morphology or physical attributes is carefully studied talk like scientists go deeper still into their very genetic material or germplasm because germplasm is a source of gene suppose we want to develop a dot tolerant variety we have to collect gene tolerant to drought and here we select germplasm from dotty areas and we collect it and plot it here for further improvement to transfer such gene to another material which is otherwise good but susceptible to drought the aim of studying germplasm is to eventually breed new varieties with traits desired by industry conventionally this happens through cross breeding in the fields but at toklai the process takes a detour through the biotechnology lab actually with the morphological study you cannot understand that what is inside in the genetic material and how the genes play a critical role for the, in the characteristics of giving the tolerance with the help of the gene expression studies and the marker studies you can identify easily marker studies are done so that biotechnologists can pinpoint the exact genes responsible for desired traits for example drought resistance Biotechnologists also study how genes are expressed that is how genes behave in order to show up as traits like flavor or aroma But why do all these detailed genetic studies matter that's because they will help in plant breeding programs of the future when climate change will have unprecedented impact on tea cultivation When that happens tea growers will need plants that have a special cocktail of traits that may not exist in the natural world always with an eye on the future toklai scientists are playing with a radical idea cutting across indian agriculture e agrarianism what exactly does this mean simply put it's empowering cultivation systems through intelligent technologies and smart gadgets let's take an example Tea planters take soil composition very seriously. Soil needs to have just the right amount of moisture, nutrients and pH content. In order to monitor these parameters, they need to get soil samples analyzed in a lab at regular intervals. This takes time, money and manpower, so planters don't indulge in it too often. At Toklai there's an experiment that hopes to change all that. We are uh, putting in sensors in the soil, pH sensor, soil moisture sensor and soil temperature sensors. And those sensors are sending electronic signals and through IT intervention we are actually converting those signals into the parameters units. Advanced computing solutions and remote sensing devices are provided by Kolkata's Center for Development of Advanced Computing or CDAC and the Department of Electronics and IT So the tea plantation owners or the tea plantation managers can actually monitor these uh, things at fre very frequent interval and at very low cost in terms of if you think of the time and the money or the manpower involved when you go for laboratory analysis The e agrarian approach extends to other areas of cultivation too where planters need decision support or intelligent systems that help them make critical choices in the field in this e agrarian program besides the sensors we are also monitoring trying to monitor the pests activity within the plantations using a ptz camera which is a pan tilt and zoom camera 
and that camera can actually monitor a certain sections of the garden 24 hours. It's like a CCTV that keeps a 24-7 check on infiltrating insects. Any foul play observed and planters can take immediate measures before a full-blown infestation. For the first time, planters can also observe pest activity at night across every section of their 300 to 500 hectare plantation, all thanks to the camera's infrared capabilities. Ultimately, we are trying to go towards precision agriculture, where we will go section by section rather than the garden as a whole. But this is at the very initial stage of the experiment. So we have got some results and they are very encouraging. So we are further uh, going forward with the next set of experiments. As much as Stocklai uses 21st century gadgets, it also uses its 100-year past for pest control. It is one of the oldest museums uh, in North, not only Northeast India, it is a treasure of India. And more than 20,000 insect species, including pests and other associated insects in Northeast India, is preserved here since 1903 onwards. Welcome to the Insect Museum of the Toklai Experimental Station. It's one of the most unique of its kind, housing nearly every Northeast Indian tea pest under one roof. So far, more than 200 species of pests reported in tea plantation in our Northeast India. All pests are preserved here in a wet condition, and some pests are preserved here as a dry conditions. And except pest, all other associated uh, insects also we are uh, collecting from British time onwards, and we are preserved properly. The museum doesn't just preserve antique insects. It's also important for planters, who can use the exhibits to identify which culprit pest has infested their plants. These relics also offer up important evolutionary clues to researchers. We can compare this insect in recent times and the insect of old times. Because due to climate change and other anthropogenic actions, insects also adapt themselves with this new environment. How they adapt, we can easily distinguish by observing both specimens which are preserved in 1903 and recent past. The fact that there's an entire museum devoted to them shows just how important the study of insects or entomology is in tea research. Just like TRA's enthusiastic e-agrarians, entomologists too are looking at futuristic approaches of pest management. Specifically, integrated pest management, a holistic approach that aims to reduce dependence on chemical pesticides. In nowadays, this concept, this is the integrated pest management, because this is a main problem is that uh, pesticide residue, whatever pesticide they are using, it is creating a problem in METI because the pesticide, whatever pesticide they are using, it is coming as a residue to the finished product, which is harmful to our human health. And moreover, pest, whatever pest, it is developing, day by day, it is developing resistance. But if planters reduce the use of chemicals and toxic materials, how can they get rid of pests? by heading back into the botanical gardens and searching for tea cultivars that have an inbuilt power to fight pests. We have just uh, now surveyed and we have identified so many plants which is having pesticidal activity and uh, which is not harmful to the human health also. And so now we are just uh, trying to generate some data and we, we have already recommended some of the plants to the tea planters. The trend for reducing toxic chemicals is followed not just for pesticides, but also for fertilizers. How is this possible? The answer is tiny microbes hidden in the soil that are too small to see, but pack in a punch of nutrients. These microbes keep busy, maintaining nitrate and phosphate levels, which are essential for tea growth. They also help keep up the delicate acidic balance in the soil. Some microbes even help tea plants fight diseases that chemicals are helpless against. Talklai's microbiologists dig deep to uncover this rich bounty. We have been working on microbial 
bio pesticides as well as the bio fertilizers we have developed the technologies just like trichoderma a trichoderma is a soil fungus we have isolated that one from the tea soil itself and now we have patented the technology of mass multiplication technology of the trichoderma Doklai is committed to making tea production an ecologically responsible activity if not the tea shrub planted today will pay a stiff price later in its 50 year life when climate change comes a calling now what is happening is that tea uh, in tea regions the rainfall is decreasing and the minimum temperature is uh, increasing uh, in the last about 96 years we have lost more than 200 mm of rainfall and uh, similarly in the same period we have uh, uh, seen the temperature has increased by 1.4 degrees centigrade and it is impacting the tea production in many areas so why wait for the inevitable to strike doklai has constructed special open top enclosures that are like time machines transporting tea cultivars into futuristic climate conditions we are using this facility open top chamber and in one chamber we are giving carbon dioxide and we are actually increasing the carbon dioxide level and here it is reference so we want to see what will be the impact on the cultivar say for example we are taking morphological parameter then biochemical then physiological there is some impact of giving carbon dioxide on those plants and we want to see which clone or which cultivar uh, will positively show the effect for future scenario this global warming effect and the climate change effect that everyone is reading in media nowadays actually will it affect the plantation or not that is the first thing and if it affects then how we will be ready for it so this in future initiatives the projects that we are doing in tea research association looks into this if you've had a glimpse of the future of tea plantations It's time to do the same in tea factories. This is where all the magic happens, where leaves from the same plant, Camellia sinensis, are transformed into different types of tea like black, green, white, yellow, or oolong. How does this happen? It begins with withering or drying leaves to reduce excess moisture. Then the leaves are given a rough and tumble treatment in two ways by using CTC machines that crush, tear and curl the leaf or by using the orthodox method of rolling and twisting leaves. Both these processes help release the tea's enzymes and oils and expose them to oxygen. Exposure to oxygen is critical to extracting the full-bodied flavors and aromas of tea. And so they're further oxidized in a process called fermentation. Over several hours, the leafy granules change color from green to brown. They are dried thoroughly one last time to stop the oxidation process. The granules are then sorted according to size and sent on their way. Every step of this process impacts the taste and smell of the final tea we drink. Which is why Toklai has set up an entire research facility to make these systems even more intelligent. Every day batches of tea are produced in this model factory. Just like they would in a commercial one. So what's the difference? Every stage in the assembly line is actually an experiment a new method of automation a new machine or a new tweak or alteration to the established process we are trying to introduce new instruments new methodology so that tea producer can actually assess his quality during the process online um, what should i say online monitoring of quality online assessment of quality so that we know what are the parameters in the green leaf will give you the best product the model factory is built to answer the fundamental question how many manually controlled processes can be automated in an intelligent manner the uniqueness of this factory is you know uh, the various sensors and the instrumentation that have, we have put at various stages whereby you can monitor the 
process online. The final aim of this factory is once you have monitored, you have set up your quality parameters, you have laid down your rules for the right kind of tea that you actually desire to manufacture. Once you have done that, you will be able to undergo the process in a completely automated manner. It's not just about setting up smart systems. The model factory also experiments with latest machines and instruments so that it can recommend the best ones for industry. One such machine is the radio frequency or RF dryer. Typically in commercial factories, withering or drying tea leaves is left up to heating machines. But RF dryers use radio frequencies to do the same job. The consequence? Perfectly dried leaves when no flavor is lost due to heat. The model factory is also invaluable when it comes to introducing new varieties of tea that are entering the market. There are various markets of tea and the requirements for various markets are different. So they have to cater to according to the need of the market. So we help by making those changes in this factory so that they can actually be guided to manufacture the type of tea. Each carefully conducted manufacturing experiment affects the final product. So what are the results of the experiment? What is the quality of tea produced? Those are questions that are answered by biochemists. After completion of the experiment, we get the finished product and we go for the chemical analysis where the basic important biochemical constituents are measured. All the results are sent to the tea industry as a TRA recommendations for better quality or quality improvement of the product. Every technology that we develop here finds its place in the field, uh, either it's in the field or in the factory of a tea garden. A single cup, an unimaginable number of processes hidden behind it. But beyond cutting edge innovation and fancy machinery, the final proof of tea's palatability lies in the simplest test of all, the taste test. Long before the days of science labs and biochemical analysis, it was the humble taste buds that ruled. Today, tea tasters are some of the most sought-after professionals in the tea industry, and their skills lie somewhere between those of mad scientists and maestro artists. And the taster's job is to not only judge the tea good or bad, taster's job is to finding the flaw of different process or field practices or any other stages where the tea produced right from field to factory. A particular tester who has a well experience in his own line, without visiting a factory, he can tell where flaw is coming on and how it can be rectified. For a seasoned tea taster, a single cup can be an encyclopedia of information. <sighs> Tasters use their delicate and nuanced senses of taste, smell and sight to analyze the appearance, leaf density, moisture content, etc. of the sample. You have to sip the liquor to some extent of air with a loud noise so that to some extent of air also seeped with so that the liquor is bubbling with the air and it will be distributed into your taste buds. Each sip conveys important information that tells the tea planter or manufacturer how to optimize their processes. The sipping is an art, I'm telling you. The tasting, particularly a sipping a cup of tea is an art. That art you have to learn, and the theory behind it is science. It is this confluence of art and science that's the theme of all tea research, from the field to the factory to your home. So the next time you reach for that humble cup of chai, remember the many journeys it took to reach your lips. If you'd like to share your feedback on today's program, 
please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 110016. Or you can mail us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.